Thanks very much indeed for joining us. I see your feud with Julie Hartley Brewer continues on Twitter. Um, basically, you're, st you're still of the opinion um, that the lockdown uh, has indeed been lifted. You don't think we're in a lockdown anymore. Um, but you did say that June the 21st probably was when everything was going to be lifted. It hasn't been. So what do you say now? Well, on the first point on lockdown, I mean, we're clearly not in lockdown anymore. Um, we can go out, we can go to restaurants, we can go to the pub, we can go to friends, we can go to family. We all know what it was like three, four months ago. So it, the, the idea we're still in lockdown is it, it, it's frankly ridiculous. You're right. I mean, I, I think, you know, I, I certainly hoped um, that, uh, that on the 21st we could have locked, locked down. As you said, that was that was identified as a date where it would probably happen. Um, we all know what's happened with the India variant. I, I actually yeah, what think has happened though? View, with but what has happened with the Indian variant? Well, no, let's, I was going to come, come on to that. Mm. My own view is there's too much emphasis on the India variant. I think a much bigger part of this and a much bigger problem is actually that there are a small but significant number of people who have been offered the vaccine and simply haven't taken it. Mm. And I think that is a big part of the problem we've got. And frankly, I'm not entirely sure what the government can do about that. Now, it's quite clear from looking at Boris um, in his statement yesterday. And obviously, people will debate this. I know people will say, oh, they're just going to keep putting it off forever. It's quite clear to me from Boris's statement. And, and more interestingly, actually, I thought from Chris Whitty and Patrick Vallance, um, that in at a maximum in four weeks time, that will be it. Even Chris Whitty himself, who, as we know, is very hawkish on lockdown and was very instrumental in getting Boris to extend, said at that point, the government will basically have done everything that it can do. And I think that's got to be it. I, and, and I think we have to be very clear now. This is it. There are four weeks left. You've got four weeks to get vaccinated. But if you don't get vaccinated in that time, then in July, July the 19th, that's it. Right. And I'm but afraid... You, I mean, you and I had this conversation. The last time, in fact, you and I spoke, we talked about the different communities uh, which are up in the north, uh, over, uh, largely uh, made up of ethnic minority communities, people who probably will not still take the vaccine no matter what. So we could possibly be in a month's time in exactly the same situation in terms of who hasn't been vaccinated. Well, I think that's a, that, that is obviously a, a, a serious issue, which is why I think I think up until this point... I think that the, the government and others have been trying to use a carrot. I mean, they've been sort of, uh, you know, they've been reaching out, uh, obviously, to the, the, the BME, com BME communities, to others who are vaccine sceptics, saying, please, come on, you, please, we, we want you to do this. And I think that I think the tone now has got to change. You know, as you said in your intro, as obviously your, your listeners are saying, we've had enough of this now. We've been through enough of this. The vaccine is our way out. Everybody is being offered access to the vaccine. The government is basically on its knees begging people to take the vaccine. Yeah, but they've we've taken this position, haven't they? Programs. We've had outreach programs. We've had mobile vaccination centres. We've had mobile vaccination units. We've had people going door to door. I'm sorry, there are no excuses now. You have to get the vaccine. Well, there are actually. And no, there are excuses if people have because, it. because it's not a compulsory vaccine. And if people don't want to have it, they don't have to have it. And the idea that government policy is now pivoting on whether or not 100% of the population gets vaccinated is ridiculous. You know, they can deal but with Mike, it. They, they can deal with 70%. But Mike, you, but, Mike, but Mike, you know, and we all know what the implications are of people who don't get vaccinated. Well, what are those implications? Even if... Even if people don't get vaccinated, if people don't get vaccinated and get hospitalised, yes. even if they don't die themselves, mm. even if they recover, one of the advantages at the moment is we're seeing even people in hospital are, are, are in hospital for shorter periods than early, uh, earlier in the crisis. But even if they don't recover, and we know this, you, you've been one of the, 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 the strongest person, people pointing this out, people in, people in hospital are taking up a bed that could be used for somebody with another illness, could be used to treat somebody with cancer, could use to be somebody with heart disease. Well, they could be, but they're not at the moment, are they? 
exactly and they but they, but we what but but mike what can we do we can't we if somebody presents at hospital unable to breathe we can't just leave them lying in the hospital no, of course corridor, not. Can we? no but that's not happening so that's Dan. the point but i'm it's making not happening. The, but, you, no i know but my point is is that you know you cannot make government policy based upon oh we better not put anybody in a hospital in case somebody else needs a bed you know that's kind of it's it's party playtime you know fantasy politics you know hospitals are there to deal with people who are sick now there are many things that everybody could be told to do to avoid being hospitalized right try not to fall off your motorbike try not to fall uh down a cliff you know try to be careful not to get drunk and and, and bang your head you know but i don't really want to live in a country where that's my instruction for the day from the government to make sure that we don't overwhelm the nhs now i i know in a in a perfect world what you're saying makes perfect sense but we don't live in a perfect world i'm afraid and most of the people um who are going into hospital with uh, covid right now uh, are unvaccinated i take that point however most of them are coming out and they're not stopping anybody else from being treated there's not that many of them but, but mike i mean we're not talking about being in a perfect world we're talking about in the real world in the real world if somebody doesn't get vaccinated then gets covid and then gets hospitalized the hospital bed they are lying in is a hospital bed no i get that that cannot be used I get that. Someone You've else. already made that point. So, I understand that. But the point is, is that there are still people who will need to be hospitalised for COVID for many reasons. I mean, some of the people who are still dying have been double vaccinated. Now, tell me that that is somehow uh, blocking another bed for somebody who, who should have it. You know, there's no guarantee in life that if you've been double vaccinated, you will not die from COVID because you might, in fact, have other underlying health problems. But my, I, I, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> yes, obviously... Right. There is not 100% guarantee that if you get double vaccinated, you will not end up, end up in hospital. But the vast, vast majority of people who are ending up in hospital are not being double vaccinated. It's plain common sense. The more people well, it, that get well, vaccinated, not, the fewer people will go into hospital. That's, yeah, that's true. But the point is, we don't live in North Korea. Therefore, you can't make people be vaccinated if they don't want to be. So I'm afraid you're just going to no, just gonna have to bite that particular bullet. No, Mike, bullet. you're right. We don't live in... Mike, you're right. We don't live in North Korea. No one is suggesting going round forcibly jabbing people. But what I, You've what been I'm accused of that in the past. On a radio programme... <laughs> yeah, you have. People have to... People have a responsibility to get vaccinated, all right? Yes. Because if they don't get vaccinated, then they will catch COVID and they will take a, yes. they will take a hospital the numbers, bed Dan, the from numbers someone game. who will get cancer. But the, now, num but the numbers game shows that it's a very small number now, and that's my point, you know, and we have to accept that there are going to be people who become ill for all sorts of reasons, not necessarily connected to COVID, who end up in hospital. But you can't start arguing about the fact that they should have been more careful and therefore they should have prevented themselves from going to hospital by not doing whatever it was that got them there. Yes, you, yes you can, Mike. Well, you can if you're if you're if you're, if you're, if you're, a, if you're a mad if you, sort of, you know if mad you dictator. Up, no, it's not being a mad dictator. It's been very very simple. We've been in lockdown for eighteen months. We all know the way to get out of the lockdown. I thought we weren't in it anymore. the vaccine. You said we weren't in it anymore. <laughs> I'm I'm using your argument. Mike. I see. But if we want to agree, we're not in lockdown. Fine. What I'm saying is, are we in tier two then? I, what I'm saying is. If we want this to end, right, mm. if you think not being able to stand at a bar is lockdown, fine. The way well, it's to be not able normality, to stand at the bar it? again, the way to end, what's not normality? I said what we have now currently is not normality. I cannot jump on a plane and go and see my mother in Connecticut, for example. That's oh, not normal. Exactly, exactly. But exactly. if it's because some so bloke in Burnley, is... if it's because some bloke in Burnley hasn't been vaccinated, I'm afraid the government's barking up the wrong tree. But Mike, as I said, if you want to get on the train, if you want an end to all of this, right, all the thing, things you guys think are still locked down, the masks, not being able to stand at a bar, the route out of that, it's very clear. It's for people to get vaccinated. Yes. Now you're absolutely right. We don't live in North Korea. So we can't go around jabbing people. But what we can do, what I can do, what you can do, what those of us have got platforms, is to be very clear. 
go out and get the vaccine. Yes. Let's right. stop this. Oh, well, you know, it's my it's it's my right. Blah, blah, blah. Well, it blah, is, blah. though. Yeah, I'm sorry. Right, I know it might be a small you... thing to you, Dan. But for most people, having their own rights to make their own decisions about what goes into their body is entirely their right and should never not be. Yes, of course, it's their right, Mike. And no one is saying it's not their right. But what I'm saying is, and we, you would, I'm sure, agree with this in lots of other contexts. It's not just in society. It's not just about rights. It's about a balance of rights it and is. responsibilities. It is, and I think like that, I said, and I, and we're I think, not going to come and we're not. No, listen, we're not going to come and send hit squads to shove needles in your arms. Well, I'm very glad but to hear you it. You need to take responsibility. Yeah, okay, you need all right, to take okay. The hold that. Just hold that thought for a moment, Dan, because we're just going to stop for a minute. We'll be right back. Dan Hodges is talking to us. It's the Mail on Sunday. He doesn't want to jab anybody forcibly, not quite. Anyway, we'll come back to this very shortly. This is talk radio. Daily Mail headline today: PM curbs could go on and on. We're talking to Dan Hodges from the Mail on Sunday. Dan, you make yourself popular as ever on uh, uh, on Twitter. This one from Janet. I'm sure. Janet says, are we going to stop treatment for smokers, <laughs> the overweight, alcoholics, drug users, people who play sport at the weekends and need hospital treatment, people who drive badly and crash their car? I'm not going to I'm not going to tell you what the last line says, but it describes you as something uh, not particularly nice. But anyway, um, she's got a point, hasn't she? I mean, the point about all of this, Dan, is, as you said uh, just before we broke there, um, it's all about a balance. Rights, responsibilities, government policy. And I think the government, if they're saying that they can only make this work and they can only lift restrictions if 100 percent of the population is vaccinated, that's never going to happen. So they're going to have to change that policy. Well, no, I mean, I thought that was an interesting example, though. Um, I mean, you said the lady, my, my, my big Twitter fan was 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 right. Mm. I mean, she's not right. I mean, we don't simply say it's all right to drive your car badly, crash and then end up in hospital. We introduce laws to prevent people from driving their cars badly. Yeah, but they have accidents without they can, right. have, they can have accidents, Dan. But we introduce laws to prevent that, Mike. Well, you don't prevent don't accidents because it's, more people it's, die on the roads every year than die of COVID, let's face it. Mike, Mike, come on. This is supposed to be the home of sort of straight talk. It's common sense. It is. That's, we why, don't that's say, why. We don't say, Mike, Mike, we don't say it's all right for you to go out and crash your car and end up in No, I'm not saying that. But we people do in, die in car accidents through no well, fault of their own. But, but the point, but no point, Mike, come on. We don't say that. We have. We have laws specifically to prevent that. We don't say it's all right to go out and take drugs and end up in hospital. It's all right to we smoke, have laws though, isn't it? It's legal. That. It's legal to we don't smoke. Even, Mike, 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 you may disagree with it. We don't even say it's all right to go out and smoke now. We have laws that prevent you smoking. No, certain, but it's not illegal to smoke, place. though. No, it isn't, Mike. And no one's saying it's illegal not to take the vaccine. But what we do say is don't smoke. But would you we say, do to, say well, would you say, would you don't go, take drugs. would you go we to do say, yeah, that, but, yeah, but hang on, Dan, would you say, and that's working really well, isn't it? Don't take drugs. There are more people taking drugs now than ever. You know, what would you say to somebody smoking a cigarette outside the office? You shouldn't be doing that because you have responsibilities not to take up a bed that might be used for somebody else in a hospital. You wouldn't do that, would you? Well, well, would you? Mike, I mean, I would, would, would I say to people, I don't think you should smoke. Yeah. Yes. Why? I say it to members of my family all the time. Not just because I don't want them to end up in hospital. I don't want them to die of cancer. Right. Now, well, that may be a well, crazy then, view, aren't they being very, that. Aren't they being terribly irresponsible then? But what? Smoking? Yeah. Yeah, of course they are. But there's a difference. There's a difference between that. I'm not saying they should be arrested. This is the difference, right? No one is saying people should be forcibly jabbed. But what we are saying... You're trying to shame them into it, though. Sorry? You're trying to shame them into it, which is in some ways worse. Uh, well, no, Mike, I'm doing what I thought we, was was a, was a fundamental part of what we're all supposed to do. I'm giving my opinion. No, you are, my yes. My opinion... But that, as long as we know that it's your opinion and it's never going to happen. What, uh, 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 though, what's never going to happen? That people are not going to be shamed into getting a vaccine because I don't think we want to live in a country oh, where oh, people sorry. are judging, constantly judging other people and looking at them as if uh, they've done something terribly wrong because they haven't decided oh, to get I'm a sorry. vaccination. No, well, let me ask you another question, right? Chris Whitty apparently is saying that he now thinks that all children should be vaccinated. Are you going to make your children get vaccinated? Uh, no, I don't. I, I'm not. Why moment. not? I mean, I isn't, isn't that irresponsible? 
Uh, sorry? Isn't that irresponsible? If everybody Isn't needs to be vaccinated. Irresponsible for children. No, you're no, telling me children. everybody needs to be vaccinated. No, Mike. No, Mike. There are, there, are, there are lots of things that I think, uh, I'm sure we would all agree, there are lots of things that we think adults should do that we wouldn't say children should do. Yeah, but if but if the government says, I mean, and Mike, if the government, sorry, no, if the government, uh, sorry, if the government recommends, or Chris Whitty, as the chief medical officer, recommends that this should happen, then you would presumably support it. No, because I think we've seen, as we've seen, and I think we've talked about a lot of times on this program. I think one. I mean, I said this the other day. Actually, I think one of the things we've seen throughout this is that the, the people who claim to be the experts have been proven at very numerous stages of this crisis not to be particularly experts yes and 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 um, still it so, goes on and to you know to an extent in certain areas you're right absolutely it still goes on i'm not, I'm not standing here saying saying the experts are you know a, 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 have had a, an amazing pandemic and been proved to be right quite quite the opposite mm. but that's but that's a separate argument the, i mean i genuinely i i i, I, I you know I find it staggering, absolutely staggering that at this stage of the crisis, we are still sitting here having an argument about whether or not people should get vaccinated. Well, because it's I mean, a personal choice, Dan. It's a personal, it's a personal it's not, it's choice. Not, I would never, even a debatable I would, point. No, I would never say you should do anything, Dan. It's not for me to tell you what to do. And neither is it for you to tell anybody else what to do. Mike, Mike. Mike, with the greatest respect, I'm a great, uh, I'm a great and avid listener of your program. Your program. You are literally sitting there saying you never say people should do something. I don't tell them to take a vaccine. No. No, not a vaccine, obviously, and that's why I'm, I'm amused about that. But you frequently and very powerfully and very forcibly tell people to do things every day on your program. It's why we all love listening. Yeah, to but it. they don't have to do them. You know what I mean? That's the no, same difference. No, of course they're not. They don't have to do them, <laughs> and they're not going to have to do them because I tell them they should do them okay. either. All right. Well, listen. Uh, sadly, we're out of time. I'm going to leave you with one more question. Final question for you, right? Um, if we're no longer in lockdown, but we still haven't lifted restrictions, presumably the lockdown didn't work. I'm sorry. If we're no longer in lockdown, sorry, I, I... if we're no longer in lockdown, right? As you say. But yet we yeah. still can't lift all the restrictions. Presumably the lockdown didn't work. No, the lockdown did work, which is why we which is why we've seen. But why such can't a I go to Portugal? Dramatic fall in cases. Sorry? Why can't I go to Portugal? But you can't go to you can't go to Portugal because there's a danger of oh, come on. bringing back COVID. Well, we've already got it. Yeah, but we've got it here, though. Cases rise, and then we do have to go back into lockdown. The whole point is we don't want to go back into lockdown, do we? Well, we're still in lockdown. No, you say we're still yeah. in lockdown. We're obviously not Because in we can't do anything that we want to do. So you, you can't go to the pub? I you can. You can't go to London? I can't. No, listen to what I said. I can't do anything that I want to do. That doesn't mean I can't do some things that I want to do. It means I can't do whatever no, I, think I what want. You mean is you can't, no, Mike, I think what you mean is you can't do everything that you want to do. I can't do that either. Charlie Mullins from a completely different industry, uh, founder of Pimlico Plumbers, is with us. How are you doing, Charlie? Yeah, I'm very good, Ian. Thank you. Very good. Good, good to see you. Um, you kind of started this ball rolling in a way because we spoke a couple of months back. And yeah, you well, said, look, like, back in January, I came up with uh, the, the way I could see it. And, and obviously, from a safety aspect, um, no jab, no job. And we've pretty much implementing that now uh, at the business. And uh, all new people asked from September will not be able to get a job with us unless they're about to jab. Yeah. I mean, um, I know what your thinking is on this, but, you know, a lot of people will say, it's a funny old world we'd have arrived in, Charlie, where you've got to mandate someone to have a chemical in their body before you can ascertain whether they're a good plumber. Yeah, look, but the world's changed. You know, we're in a situation now that we've never had before. Thousands of people are dying, millions across the world. We're being offered one... Uh, option to help us get through this pandemic and that's to have the jab and uh, I have to say I think it's a no-brainer I'm sure there's people out there that can't have it people with medical conditions but that I believe is the only reason that they shouldn't have the jab you know we can't continue to to let people that are not going to get vaccinated um, you know put everybody else in danger yeah so what happens then if you know somebody comes to you and says I oh, want a job I've got a medical exemption I don't you know have to have the vaccination because it's dangerous to my health uh, but I still want to be a plumber. 
Well, they, they won't get a job with, with Pimlico plumbers. So even I, if they've got a health reason Even if it. they've got an health problem. Yeah. Um, but what I'm saying is I'm sure there's, there's ways around it for other businesses that can work that way. You're not dealing yeah. with the public and you're in a little office on your own. But all Air One is we're very involved with customers. We're, we're very integrated with, you know, 450 staff. And I, I just can't take a risk to put my staff at risk or, or my customers. What about this comes from Les who says, is Charlie Mullins happy for his employees to refuse to enter customers' premises unless the client gives proof of a vaccination? Well, I, I'm, I, I'm, at the moment, that's not in my control. I can't tell a customer to have it or, or, or encourage a customer to have it. But you've got to remember, common sense is going to come in here. And I believe something like 75 or 80 percent of the UK adult population has already had the jab. So we're only talking about the minority of people. But we're getting many customers now uh, uh, are insisting that if the plumber comes in, he needs to have been vaccinated. Let's speak with Anthony Johnson, NHS nurse and organiser of Nurses United. Anthony, how are you doing? I'm all right, thanks. Thanks Good. for having me on here. That's a pleasure. Just tell us about Nurses United first. Um, so we're a campaign organisation of frontline nurses. Um, so we go out there and campaign for the things that we believe that nurses and our patients need. Uh, things like access to PPE, mm -hmm. um, a proper fair pay rise and you know, dealing with things like racism within the NHS as well. OK, so all good stuff. Um, in terms of vaccination, though, I mean, is this cross the path of, of what you campaign for or against? Compulsory vaccinations are coming your way by the looks of things, Anthony. Yeah, we I mean, we would totally disagree with this. I mean, we've got 112 vacancies within, you know, the care sector. We've got a similar amount within the NHS. And to be going and putting patient safety at risk by going and causing more vacancies is not the right solution, really. Um, most people who work within the NHS and within social care have had the vaccine. Mm. And I mean, we just need to go back to what care staff have been through. We've not had access to PPE, even though it's an airborne virus. So we could have actually protected ourselves and our patients. We've had COVID seeded into social care providers. We've still not had an effective test and trace system. It feels like the government's passing the book and going to blame in frontline NHS professionals or social care professionals for the fact that the virus ran rampant, because that's the reason why people were put at risk is incompetence that we had throughout this pandemic, True. not frontline staff. But but the, the jab is here now. I mean, what, what about Charlie's point, which was very simple? You know, he can't put his staff at risk um, and he doesn't want, therefore, to put, you know, customers at risk either. So um, following on from that, I mean, you work in an area where clearly most people you come into contact with and your colleagues do are vulnerable. Um, does what Charlie says not apply to your world even more so? Yeah, but I'm a public health nurse by background. And what I used to do is spend quite a lot of time trying to get people to, to uptake vaccines. And it would take a long time to do it. You know, as a health visitor, I was working with families sometimes for years to get them to access vaccination. And I know that we feel like we don't have enough time, but that's the only way we're going to be able to convince people. I mean, this probably isn't going to be able to be applicable in employment law. If you suddenly change people's contracts midway through, mm. you know, people are going to take it to the courts. It's not going to hold up. And as I said, it's going to put more patients at risk because we can't afford to lose uh, these care providers or these nurses. Uh, look, look, Anthony, I'll, I'm, I'm just going to have to make you wrong there. First of all, when it goes to employment law, you can change people's contracts. You can't force them to sign it. But if they agree that they have the jab and you make an amendment to their contract, it's not an issue. You've got all these people keep coming on about employment. But Charlie... Charlie, they have to accept that. They have to be That's willing what to I just sign it. You, they might be willing, but they might be willing to do it for Pimlico plumbers. But if we've got the vacancy rates within social care providers, no, uh, hold on, I'm going to stop. Gonna that. Anthony, look, I'm going to stop you again, fella. You know, you, I already know that I believe 80% of NHS staff and care workers have already had the jab. And why are they going to refuse it? Why are they going to want to put their self at risk? Why are they going to want to put vulnerable uh, patients at risk? I mean, it's a no-brainer. You, 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 you guys are magnificent. You do a great job and we admire you so much. But at the end of the day, you cannot put patients at risk because an NHS staff is not, might not want to do it. But for their own safety, they're going to do it. I, I, I've had NHS nurses on to me today. Char say, oh, Charlie, oh, let me finish. I... Well, let me finish. Don't be rude. Uh, what I'm saying to you is that the one that came on to me today said, you know, she's lost members of staff that, as you said, weren't geared up to, to have, the, have the virus. She's lost 
patients that have, have, have had it, a young girl with disabilities and, and a carer worker, she says, pass that virus on to her. And, and the young lady died. Her father is adamant about that. So you've got to look at the safety aspect. That's what it's about here. It's not about, you know, who don't want it and why they don't want it in human rights. The world's changed. We need to, to, to follow suit and we need to safeguard everybody as possible and quickly as we can. It's now on offer. Three okay. months from now, everyone, probably 90% of the UK population will have had it and, and we'll get back to some form of normality. Anthony, the headline there is, it's a no-brainer from Charlie. Yeah, I just wanted to put it back in context of like, so I'm a nurse. If I was to say that um, anything that's out there, if I wanted to offer antipsychotic medication to a patient and I know it's in their best interest, if they've got capacity to deny it and they don't want to consent to it, I'm not able to force them into doing it. I think it's such a real no dangerous No one's forcing accident. anyone, Anthony. No one's but you're saying them. that that's what they'll do because how are people going to be able to afford to live, Charlie? What you're basically mean? saying that they're not going to be able not to work. You're not them. Look, if they don't, if they, if they don't want if to have to If they don't chat, work... Then yeah, but if you're, a career, if you're a career nurse, um, Charlie, I mean, and you know somebody says, look, it's your, the jab or your job. Well, exactly, but, but you know they want it for their own protection. They want it for for their patient's protection. They, they want it to be able to get on an aeroplane, to go and socialise. The world's changing. I mean, uh, maybe, maybe everyone's not seeing it, but common sense has got to come in here. You ain't going to be able to go into a theatre, a gym, uh, an hairdresser's, travel, uh, enough, even a workplace. It's here. We need to have the jab. Why are we making a big thing of it? I mean, why are because we making... How... And if, well, tell because me, Charlie, it takes it takes time to go convince people to make healthy lifestyle choices. Otherwise, why do we have so many people smoking? Why do we have such a high obesity rate? Well, yeah, but look at we're getting on top of smoking. But but you say that by we're not. by <laughs> look by the end of this week, they've already said everybody that's uh, uh, capable or, or ready to have a jab will, will have will have had a booking to get the jab done. So that in three months from now, probably 90% of, of the people that need to have had the jab would have had it. We're talking about 10%. The ones, unfortunately, that have um, so medical... Hold on, let me just finish, and, Andy, Anthony. The ones that have got medical problems, we have to look at that separately. The other people are just making a big deal about it because because they're selfish people and, and, and they're killing people and spreading the virus around. Okay, but, are, you, are you selfish, Anthony? Are you spreading the virus? I, are you can, killing people? Can I... Can I just point out, I have had both of my vaccinations. It's people who are going to be, though, worried about like what the ramifications might be, and we need to convince those people, not force them. That 10% that you're talking about, Charlie, is around about 160,000 NHS workers. Yeah, uh, if any of them are front line, do you think that we can lose them in the middle of a pandemic? No, of course you can't, but you can't have the um, the, 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 the tail wagging the dog. You, you've, either, you've either got to have somebody who's a leader and says, this is the way to get through it, this is what we need to do, and and that's all we say. No, but you keep using this word force. No one's forcing anybody. They have a choice, and they have a choice with coming and work for us. If, if, you, if you had the vaccination, we give you a great job and look after but you. But it's not a choice, Charlie, is it? It's not a choice if it's your job or your jab and you've got well, a career. Is. You've done 16 years in the NHS, a great track record of looking after people, saving lives. And Which somebody is wonderful. Says, Sorry, you're not going to have the jab. Well, yeah, sort yeah, of. Yeah, but why, why? You can't put everybody else's life at risk. Do you know how many people died uh, in care homes, uh, Anthony, uh, COVID related? Yeah. But Go on, like, give me a clue. No, Charlie, it was like in the tens of thousands, Charlie, but that doesn't mean, Charlie, it was in the tens of thousands, and of course we know that. No, what, what did you say, many died? Hold it, hold it, Anthony, just I a direct said, question. it was in the tens of, Charlie, I said it was in the tens of thousands. No, no of course oh, we I'll ask you a direct question. How many have died yeah. COVID-related in care rooms? Okay, you've got the I specific don't. number. Well, obviously, hmm. 40,000, yeah. over 40,000. So how can you possibly put more people at risk? 40,000, that's a third of... But Charlie, do it. Do we have test and trace in place right now? Look, Do we I'm have not PPE about in place nonsense. right now? Let's get to because the point. If, it's all no, about... because the vaccine, no, because it is, because it's relevant, because if the vaccine escapes, which it currently does with the Delta variant, and we've got a 30% escape rate with double dosing, then it means that we're going to have to have more vaccinations. Oh, and we well, still don't provide look, adequate frontline protection for yeah, frontline look, NHS staff you, or care providers. Look, if the so I'm you want to go blame like people for the fact that they're going to make a decision because they're worried, Rather well, than going look, and trying look, to understand them, I'll try and convince been, them to change right, their mind. All right, Anthony, all right, my turn. We, we've been in lockdown for over 18 months. The economy's come to a standstill. We can't travel, we can't socialise, kids can't go to school. 
We can't meet our family. So if we don't make a change now, are we going to continue like this? The virus ain't going away. There's more viruses coming out. Uh, honestly, I really... Look, Anthony, I admire you people. You're great workers. At the end of the day, we're talking about a minority of people that... that don't want it or won't have it. Let's let's talk about the safety of people at work and lives are at risk here and they're the people we need to protect. Anthony, just tell me how many people in your experience uh, are, are not wanting the jab and what are the kind of reasons you're hearing for it in the, in the nursing the, world? Most of the people that I've heard tend to be like towards the end of their career, which make up, by the way, like a third of all nurses are five years away from retiring because they think, why should they be like st sticking around for it? And so those people, you know, they don't think that they go along with it. A lot of people don't get the flu vaccination anyway, which this law would include. And so that's the reason why they'd be going. But to be honest, I've not actually met people like, as Charlie said, it's around about 90% of all NHS workers have had the jab, the first one, and 80% have had both doses. Mm. So, you know, it's targeting a small minority of people, but they're the ones that I'm more worried about who are going to leave. And well, you, to you, say, you say they're going to leave, but they've got nowhere to go, Anthony. If they can't get a job... They can retire, though, Charlie. Well, yeah, retire, but let's let's be honest, it costs money But that's retire. a third of all nurses. Well, I, I, personally, I, I think you're just grabbing up figures there. I, I don't think, you know, if 80% of your NHS staff uh, have had it, you know, how are you going to lose 30% of, 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 of the older ones that are with you? People are crawling no, across... Gonna, Anthony, people... People will crawl anyway. across the snow they naked to have the jab. Okay. And look, I think you're with it, and I think you've just got to encourage more Listen, people. Listen, Anthony, um, we will speak again, I'm sure. Thank you, Anthony Johnson, NHS nurse, organiser of Nurses United. You heard clearly his position on this. Just some comments coming through uh, from you. Charlie is right. He's absolutely spot on. Although somebody here, Charlie, says that Charlie Mullins is a demon. Yeah. Sent straight from hell. He's advised me not to look in your eyes. Oh, well, as you say, I mean, they, them people want locking up, you know what I mean? I mean, they're, <laughs> they're proper oddballs, aren't they? I mean, common sense is... Yeah, but he thinks that about you. A lot of people say you're a dictator. What's a going dictator? on there? I run a successful business. It's a uh, multi-million pound bit. You employ loads of people, but, you know, yeah, people are going to lose careers because of your fascination with the vaccination. Not at all. They're going to save their careers. I mean, the, the people that don't have the jab, they're the ones that are going to suffer. They're not going to be able to travel. They're not going to be able to, to go to work. not going to be able to socialise. What is the big deal about, you know, having a jab to, to save people's lives? I mean, medical reasons, yes, they've got to be looked at separately. All the busybodies that just don't want to have it because, oh, human rights, and I'm not having people, to, and, oh, you're invading my uh, my, my uh, privacy. All you're asking people is, have you had the, been vaccinated or not? That's the question, and obviously it's a no-brainer, and the quicker the better that we get it rolled out, the quicker we get back to uh, the great company, the great country with, that we are. Let's say a very good afternoon to Chris Mitchell, Chairman of Park Lane Healthcare. Chris, welcome to the show. Good afternoon, Mike. Hi. Thanks very much for joining us. I suppose I should I should start off with asking you whether you agree with Matt Hancock, really, and, and if so, why? I do agree with Matt Hancock. Um, I mean, the world has changed, and uh, it's not we're not a country that likes to be uh, dictatorial. We're a democracy. But at the end of the day, uh, we've got 300 staff, uh, all bar about two or three tops at uh, last count, have taken the vaccine and the the edict that we're going to be saying to everybody new is if you want to work in healthcare, as far as we're concerned get the vaccine and i feel very very strongly about it you know we, times have changed you have to adapt accordingly and uh, it's a very real problem and fortunately we don't have it at park lane we only had about 13 percent dissented at the very start which was that the national average was 35 percent uh, that was about 6% within a few days. I did a round-robin tour of all our homes to meet everybody individually and talk through their concerns. And we've now got a couple of people left, and, and that's where we are. And those people who have not been vaccinated, have they given you a reason? Yeah, they, 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 they're, they're strong reasons. Um, but, I mean, everybody's got a strong reason. Um, if it's health-related, health then that's fine by us, uh, providing it's proven. But if it's but if it's health related or it's pregnancy, that's that that's fine. But any other reason, I'm going to take some convincing. But once already on board, of course, we live in a society today where you can't say boo to a goose. So you know you you can't. Well, you say can. Well, you can say boo. You can say boo to me, Chris. Don't worry, I can take it. <laughs> you know. But, yeah, you know what it's like, though. It's a protectionist sort of sort of world that we live in today, and that's fine. You know, we all we all need people to stand up for us. But I feel very strongly about this. Yeah, one. but who's going to stand up for people who don't feel comfortable taking it because as i said there are plenty of young women that i know who have said to me 
that they're not certain that there's any suggestion that there's a problem with fertility by taking yeah. it. They're, they're by no means convinced that there is. But if as long as there's a, a smidgen of doubt, surely you're yeah. within your rights as a young woman to say, I don't wish to put my fertility at risk. Therefore, I don't wish to take it. Would you let somebody like that work for you? Well, no. I mean, I would say I would say to those people going forward, I mean, my argument would be, yes, you are within your rights, but go and work in something else. So you would you so you wouldn't employ somebody who had those concerns? Uh, no, they, if, if they from 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 now on our company policy is if people come on board with us, then they've got to agree or, to take the vaccination or have have had it taken because you know we live in a in a well. My responsibility ultimately is to the residents in our care home and the staff, and the way that you keep them protected is to take that stance. You know, we were offered many, 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 many tens of thousands of pounds to take people in uh, without the correct checks at the very start of COVID. We turned everything down because ultimately our responsibility was to our residents and staff. And therefore, to keep that going going forward, then we need to have everybody vaccinated. And we've got 300 girls who completely agree with me. And what about the, in, uh, the, the, the residents of the care homes that you've got? How many of those have you got? Uh, about at the moment, about two hundred and eighty-five, two hundred and ninety. And are they all double jabbed? Yes, they are. So surely they're not in any danger, are they? Well, that's the theory. I mean, that's what the scientists tell us. But you know, you, you're not in any danger if it's a hundred percent against the vaccine. You know, the vaccine is a hundred percent effective, but we know it's not. I mean, I'm sixty-two well, it's years not, old. It's not, the, the, the Pfizer vaccine is ninety-six percent effective. Yeah, but it's not. It's not a hundred percent. And so, well, nothing, well, nothing's a hundred percent, Chris, is it? Well, nothing is, but, you know, it's your gran who's with us or your granddad or your parents or whatever. Um, you know, take that as a compliment saying granddad for you anyway, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, my uh, granddad's yeah, long gone. <laughs> and mine too, sadly. But um, but the, the bottom line is, is that, uh, yeah, nothing is for certain in life. But when I'm looking after old, vulnerable people and I look them in the eye and I look their, their kids in the eye and say we're going to do our utmost to look after them, I mean it. And so, therefore... You know, if, if, the ways, if there are ways in which I can influence that and make that promise more underlined, then that's one way I'm going to do it. And that is by saying everybody working at Park Lane Healthcare uh, coming on board has to take the vaccine and we're about 99 point something percent uh, vaccinated as a, as a staff right. team. So you said earlier that if somebody's pregnant, they don't have to be vaccinated. Is that right? No, because I mean, at the moment, I mean, the, I mean I'm, I'm not bang up to daily because your call came out of the blue because I'd stopped doing a lot of interviews because the ship has sailed. You know, I think we should all move on. I think we, we well, have we'd to like move to. On. We'd like well, we to, would, but I'm we afraid would like to, the ship it, hasn't sailed society, yet because they're only taking people on uh, certain uh, under certain conditions. So there's lots of other ships that are coming behind, behind them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, so what was your question? Before my, quest you my question was, you said earlier that if somebody was pregnant, that that might be a reason why they wouldn't have to get vaccinated. Yeah, and that, what I was trying to say, I think, was that was that the the last the last research that we we did and, and that we we uh, took on board was that was that it was still uh, they were still advising uh, ladies who were pregnant uh, not to uh, get the vaccine. To my knowledge, that's still the case. Right. If it's not the case, then our, our ruling would stand. But well, why do you I think, think that is the case, though? No idea. I'm not a scientist. I don't well, know. I would assume it's because it might harm the unborn child. No. Yeah, I would have guessed that's what they're saying. Yeah. Right. Well, so wouldn't it? Be, I'm, wouldn't, I'm not asking so wouldn't it be? Women. So wouldn't it be natural then for somebody who might be thinking about having a child to then say, well, if it's yes, not well, safe for people to take because they're pregnant, if I'm going to want to be pregnant, maybe it's not yep. safe for me to take either. Yeah, that's a fair comment. And that, and that has been and that has been said. Yeah, well, that's a fair comment. And if that's if they're planning on having children, then I guess they'd be planning to to work elsewhere other than with Park Lane Healthcare. Yeah, but you because can't discriminate against people like that, Chris, can you? I can't. I, I can't. And I mean, you know, this is where this is where the law comes in and so on. Because you could be. I mean, know, if, the through, through. if the government tell us, Mike, Mike, you asking the question and then wait for the answer. You know, if the government tell us that that's what they're going to do, I'm I'm completely in agreement with them. Well, yeah, but the problem with compulsory. It orders from the government. Is it's that... not compulsory orders. They don't have to work. People don't have to work in the same in that place. You know, you have a choice about your job. You know, thank God it is that way. Everybody's got a choice about what they want to do for a living. And if that's what they no, want to do for a living, that's not true, actually, then, Chris. Yeah. No, because yes, no, you, you, are... yes, you. But you cannot put what I would regard as unnecessary constrictions on people. For example, you could not say that you mm -hmm. wouldn't employ somebody who suffered from MS, could you? 
No. You could not say you would not employ somebody who was a type 1 diabetic, could you? No, not at all. Neither so, would so, you want. so why can you say that you, can't, you won't employ somebody who hasn't had a vaccine? Because the, the bottom line for us is whether they're, an, whether they're a risk of infection to our residents. And, and they are my ultimate responsibility. Well, you do know, of course, that, as you've said earlier, the vaccine does not stop the risk of infection. We do know that, yeah. So therefore, but, by yeah. having had the vaccine, you don't guarantee that that infection won't happen. No, you, you don't guarantee so it. You see where, so you see where it's difficult. Doing, I can see where it's difficult. And, and life is difficult. And, and employing people is difficult. And, and working in today's society is very difficult. But, you know, what we have to do as a, as a company, if, if, if anybody's watching this who's, who they're contemplating their, par their parents going into a care home, I want to know that that company had a chairman like me that was saying to them, they come first, they come first. And we're going to do everything in our power to keep them safe. And one of those one of those ways is that we want people to be vaccinated who work at Park Lane Healthcare. And I think it's an honourable stance. I think it's a noble stance. It's not something we want to do. None of us expected to be in this position to play God. But but unfortunately, we are having to. And you know, we can't wait for the day when all the doors are thrown wide open and we get back to some form of normality. Mm. But this thing we've been told we've got to live with it. And so whilst ever we've got to live with it, we've got to take every precaution we can to keep our residents safe and our staff safe that have worked their damn socks off all this time, um, lar largely un uh, um, you know, unapplauded, uh, less so in social care than in the NHS, I might add. And for me, they're absolute heroes and they've looked after our folks brilliantly and it's our responsibility to ensure that that protection is maintained to the best of our ability. And what are the visitation rules currently, Chris? Because I've forgotten what the government regulations are on that. The, the visitation rules at the moment, are they seem to change by the day. Um, you know, if you go on our on our Facebook pages, etc., we talk about them. I don't want to say exactly what the rules are off the top of my head, because I'll be frank with you. I don't know where they sit as at, as at this well, moment. Well, let me put it to you this way. If I've got a relative in, in one of your care homes, can I come and yeah. see them? Yes, you can come and see them if you follow the various rules. Vaccinated people, uh, up to five, up to five people in the, in the close family, um, and in the same what inside the room in the room. Yeah, in, inside designated areas where they're wearing PPE and uh, they follow the correct procedures, they come in and they take lateral flow tests. We get the result back and all of that sort of thing. So they've got to be tested. Uh, they've got to wear PPE. What sort of masks and gowns or what? Uh, yes, to, yes, I would say so at the moment. Yeah, we're still following guidance. Um, the only reason the guidance. I'm asking, Chris, is I get a lot of calls from people who say that they have great difficulty in understanding the rules yeah. and the capabilities and the inabilities they've had to see their relatives, and they find um, that yeah. some care homes are not really helping them to do that. I think that I think that care homes to an extent have had a have had a, a rough ride over all this because often the government have come out with advice that's differed from the local authorities where our care homes are situated because their advice has often gone against the government and and we are under contract with these local authorities who pay us fees for for some of our our clients and so we have to listen to them but we have to listen to a myriad of different guidance on um you know, on, on all the rules surrounding COVID at the moment. And it does change daily. And everybody puts forward a fantastic case uh, representing whether relatives should be allowed in freely, whether they shouldn't be. It's a very difficult tightrope to walk and it's heartbreaking at times. Yeah. So you don't and let people same, in who haven't been vaccinated, in other words? We know we, they can be under, following the same, the same rules. But what we've asked people on Facebook, me personally, is I've asked our younger audience to please consider all of this until you've been vaccinated. I've asked our families to allow vaccinated members only to visit our folks at the moment, but it isn't compulsory. I'm asking them, you know, as the chairman speaking to them personally and hoping that they will follow that rule because we're, all of us haven't got to wait a lot longer now. I believe that, you know, end of August... Yeah, we've been hearing that for a long time, Chris, haven't we? Well, we have, but, you know, everybody's been learning on this. You guys are great at j jumping on the bandwagon and winding everybody up. What bandwagon and, is and that, Chris? Got... Pardon? What bandwagon is that? 
any bandwagon you wish to choose. Well, which, but, bandwagon, you know, which bandwagon are you accusing me well, of jumping on? Well, the bandwagon on? I'm, on, I'm on about is that you wanted to put care homes front and centre uh, of it all. And we've wanted that, some more recognition under social care for a long, long time. But not in the way that, that everyone's done it. You know, you, you, uh, some of the, 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 the 24 hour, hour news outlets... Piers Morgan, uh, who I think is a great broadcaster, but he thinks he's been doing us all a favour, as do the, you know the likes of the 24-hour broadcasters. But a lot of these people have put us front and centre for the wrong reasons, because everybody now thinks, and did think during the height of the pandemic, don't go into a care home, you'll catch COVID. But the reality is, is that everybody, you know, everybody who didn't obey those rules gave our folks at other homes, I might add, COVID, rather than us being the the source of covid but yet you know it's been well, wasn't it the case well wasn't it the case that people who were working in those care homes were also giving people covid that's put that's possibly that's possibly the case i'd like to think that no, none of that but why weren't you happened. testing them sorry why weren't you testing them testing who testing the workers testing the well we do all the time well you I do mean, now that, but you weren't doing it first of all were you we were do- we were doing it from the minute that we had the facility to be able to so do who's, so. So whose fault time, is it? You know? Whose fault is it that all the, the people who died in care homes died in care homes? Then whose whose fault is it? Yeah. What are you why, what are you trying to lead me into? You're slagging off of the government. I'm asking happened. you a question, Chris. Yeah. Okay. Whose fault was it? What the, the people that were allowed in care homes? No. Who's, no. Say, whose fault? You no. Know, we're told that an awful lot of people died in care homes. Whose fault is that? I would say some of it lays at the fault lays the fault of the government discharging them from hospital. I'd say so. Matt Hancock it's... says that accounts for one point six percent of of it, according to Public Health England. I, I I wouldn't agree with that. I would have thought it was a lot higher than that. I would have thought it was a lot higher than that. All right. Um, well, so if some of the fault lies with the government, where else does the fault lie? I would have I would have said that you know there'll be there'll be certain care homes that probably didn't follow the the guidelines as as well as others, but I would have thought they're in the minority. But the trouble you've got is that you could have one person go into a care home. And it gets around the care home, and before you know where you are, you could have thirty, forty, fifty people with it. I mean, did you that's, lose? That's did you really... lose many residents in your group? Sadly, out of out of all the f- people we had, uh, of the fifteen months it's been going on so far, we've probably had twelve or thirteen months COVID-free in all our homes. We had probably a four to six week spell in two homes, and across those two homes, sadly, we lost, I believe, three people. Yeah. It's quite a small number, isn't it? So, it's so, a very, it's, it's do you think, a very do you think it's been exaggerated then, this, this business of people who've died in care? Well, Chris Whitty said at the start of all this, I remember him saying on the TV, one of the very early interviews, he said, look, I'm not wanting to let you know that just because you're 80, you're a goner. And that's the very words he used, somewhat wryly. Uh, and, you know, from what we, we, we sadly lost three people, it's three too many. But that's pro- that was probably three out of when those outbreaks were in our homes. Probably three from uh, probably 70 or 80 people that, that got symptoms of COVID and a similar amount of staff. That's how it can rip through a care home. But, you know, it did prove that Chris Whitty was right and that, and that a lot of them had no symptoms. A lot of them had mild symptoms. Some had worse well, symptoms. It, it proves but, that an awful lot of people that got COVID didn't die as well. Absolutely, you know, yeah. which is what I've well, been yeah, saying. but that's back to the press. Yeah, but all you guys do is talk all the doom and gloom all the I, time. I don't, I don't think you've been I'm listening not saying to me, Chris. You, Mike, I, don't you, know, you I mean, I don't know whether you've ever listened to my show, Chris, but I I, I'm very known. far from doom and gloom. Final oh, question right, okay. for you, Chris. Well, that's why I don't know. I haven't listened to your show. Well, you're before. obviously missing out on something that you should be not missing I'm out obvi- on. You know, I'm obviously join you know, the revo- join the revolution, mate. For heaven's sake, how much do you pay your average social care worker in your homes? How much do they get paid? Average average pay, well, what is average pay? Because you take into well, account... Well, uh, an average is, is adding up all of the people together and dividing it by the number. That's the average. So much, so much, yes, I know what the average means okay. in mathematical terms. Oh, right? good. You just uh, asked me what it meant, so I've just told you. Yeah, OK. All right. Well, our, 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 care is, our care is some of them in areas where we only get state-funded fees are on minimum wage, where we get private fees. Many of them are on a, on, are on a lot higher than that. Like how much? Like it's variable from anything up to nine fifty an hour or something like that, and wow. then senior carers and so on. Okay, all and right, Chris. A... Well, listen, I appreciate your time. Thank you very much indeed. You need to lose that chip on your shoulder though about the journalism in this country, because if it wasn't for the journalists in this country, you'd be in a much worse place. I can tell you that. Chris Mitchell, Chairman of Park Lane Healthcare. Uh, this is Talk Radio.